This is the Aero third stage kill vehicle and is one of the most important part of the missile. Equipped with movable thrusters, it plays a crucial role in intercepting targets above the stratosphere, ensuring that hazardous materials like nuclear, chemical, or biological substances don't disperse. The Aero missile system's radar continuously sends uplinks, updating the target's position and calculating the estimated interception point. Meanwhile, the kill vehicle dynamically adjusts its trajectory using precise thrust control, simultaneously aligning its electro-optical sensors toward the intended target. While the American THAAD and Patriot interceptors uses Diver Attitude Control System. As the Patriot missile takes flight, it begins with inertial guidance launched from the engagement control station. But as it nears interception, it switches to the KA Band Seeker, the terminal guidance kicks in, using short propellant motors to explosively adjust the missile's path. This ensures a precise and on-target interception. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. The Aero Missile Defense System consists of three basic parts, the Missile Launcher Unit, the Green Pine Radar Antenna, and the Aero Missile. The Missile Launcher Unit is composed of six Erector Launcher tubes housing ready-to-fire missiles. Positioned at the rear of a two-axle trailer, each launcher, when fully loaded with six launch tubes carrying ready-to-fire missiles, weighs 35 tons. The Green Pine Radar serves as the warning and fire control radar for the Aero 3 Anti-Ballistic Air Defense Missile System. It plays a crucial role in target detection and guidance. The Aero operates as a two-stage missile. Let's look inside this engineering technology. This is the solid propellant booster and sustainer rocket motors. At the rocket's peak sits the ignition chamber, triggering the combustion of the solid propellant when activated. This propellant isn't just any substance, it's a meticulously crafted blend of fuel and oxidizer poured into a casing and then cured. Encasing this blend is a protective shell called the motor case. At the core of the rocket lies the propellant burning zone. Here, the solid fuel and oxidizer react, producing incredibly high temperature combustion gases which helps to launch the rocket at incredible speed above the Earth's surface. Moving further to the front, the most important part of the missile is the kill vehicle, which can be divided into three basic parts. The second stage is the propulsion system with a thrust vectoring nozzle. Just above it is the warhead, a directed high explosive fragmentation weighing 150 kilograms, which translates to 330 pounds. The third stage is the seeker, capable of pivoting itself to track its target. But what's the big deal about this long-range anti-ballistic missile system? Let's start with a propulsion system the famous THAAD, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense uses a divert attitude control thrusters. In comparison to the Aero 3 kill vehicle, which utilizes a thrust vectoring nozzle with a solid fuel rocket, it has a shorter and more limited burn time. It has a few advantages, one of them being the ability to compensate for a lack of radar accuracy. When the radar sends the interceptor to an inaccurate target location, the Aero 3 kill vehicle can adjust its trajectory. Since intercontinental ballistic missiles travel at very high speeds, the kill vehicle must change its trajectory based on newer, more accurate radar data from its seeker. A failure to fully divert the course to the new target would result in a failure to intercept. The thrusters allow the Aero missile to change direction very quickly and flexibly. On the other hand, FAD uses divert attitude control systems. Although highly capable, it is not as flexible or fast enough when it needs to change directions. Furthermore, Aero 3 thrusters allows for the purposeful launch of the interceptor before accurate radar data is available, knowing it can alter its trajectory later, taking full advantage of the radar's range. Moving to the sensors, FAD depends on a wide field of view seeker and physically moves to keep the target in the seeker's field of view, which slows down the missile. On the contrary, the Aero 3 missile uses a pivoting seeker, capable of rotating on each side, thus allowing for extreme lead pursuits, flexibility, and engagement of threats. These steps outline a simplified version of how the system operates. Step 1. The Aero Weapon System, comprised of radar and launchers, continuously searches for targets in the expected direction. Step 2. Upon the firing of an intercontinental missile, it transmits a message to the Battle Management Center. The center processes this information, selecting the optimal interceptor and battery despite potential radar inaccuracies at long ranges. Step 3. The Aero 3 launches vertically and then redirects toward the estimated interception point. Step 4. Before the booster motor burns out, an aerodynamic stabilizing mechanism deploys to ensure stability during this phase. 
Step 5. As the target approaches, the radar identifies the hostile warhead, initiating separation and revealing the kill vehicle. Step 6. The radar sends uplinks to update the new target position and estimated interception point. The kill vehicle adjusts its trajectory using highly dynamic thrust control while aligning its electro-optical sensors towards the target. Step 7. The final homing process commences, leading to a direct hit on the target, destroying the warhead. Step 8. In the event of evasion by one of the hostile warheads, the system engages in a revaluation process, creating additional shooting opportunities for both Arrow 3 and 2 interceptors. What sets apart the Iron Dome Interceptor from the Arrow Missile Defense System? They serve distinct purposes. The Iron Dome is relatively inexpensive, less complex, and primarily designed to neutralize artillery shells, unguided missiles, or inexpensive projectiles that pose a threat to civilian areas. On the other hand, the Arrow is considerably more advanced as an exoatmospheric interceptor. Its primary function is to intercept ballistic missiles carrying conventional, chemical, biological, or even nuclear warheads. Additionally, it possesses the capability to destroy satellites. Let's take a closer look at how the Iron Dome missile defense system operates. The process begins with the radar detecting and tracking threats within a 100 kilometers radius. Subsequently, the data is transmitted from the radar to the battle management control system, then to the launcher, and finally, to the interceptor. The system analyzes the trajectory of potential threats and selectively intercepts those projected to fall within the protected area. Once a specific threat is identified, an interceptor missile is launched to eliminate the incoming rocket before it reaches its predicted impact zone. Equipped with an electro-optical sensor, the interceptor missile tracks and targets the incoming rockets aiming to approach as close as possible to neutralize the threat. The design of the Iron Dome missile focuses on a head-on strike against its intended target. Upon reaching the designated target, the missile activates its advanced sensors and laser system. This activation triggers the proximity fuse warhead, armed with fragmentation rounds that detonate within a mere 10 meters of the target, causing maximum damage upon impact. While the Patriot's missile uses Divert Attitude Control System. In the initial stages, the Patriot missile employs inertial guidance, specifically launched from the engagement control station. As it approaches the intercept point, the missile utilizes the KA band seeker to precisely track the target. An optimal aim point is chosen and terminal guidance is engaged. The short propellant motors explosively refine the missile's trajectory towards its target, ensuring accurate interception. This methodology aids the missile in reaching its trajectory and facilitates a hit to kill intercept of the target. The high energy impact upon direct contact with the missile helps neutralize weapons of mass destruction. We make original 4K 3D animation with a small team of animators, so please support us by subscribing and dropping in a comment for more exclusive engineering animations made just for you guys.